All right, today we're going to look at volume of prisms and cylinders. And before we start, I just want to go over Cavalieri's principle. Cavalieri's principle is a theorem that says if you have two space figures or solids that have the same height and they have the same cross section, meaning that they have slices, if you would take two dimensional slices in anywhere in the solid um, at the same angle, then if those cross sections have the same two dimensional area, then and they have the, the solids have the same height, then they're all going to have the same volume. That's what Cavalieri's principle means. Um, so each one of these cross sections, although difficult to see, you can, I think, go on math and bits. That's where I took the picture from. Um, each one of these comes out to be a, an area. Each cross section has an area of uh, 30. Um, the circles cross-sections are about 29.99, so close enough to 30. So as these are all the same height, they all actually have the same volume because their cross-section areas are all 30. All right, so that's what Cavalieri's principle means. And it doesn't matter whether or not these are upright, meaning they are right prisms and right cylinders, or if they're oblique, meaning they're leaning, okay? All right, so that's just Cavalieri's principle. So the routine of what we're going to do is the procedure is not any different. Okay, so let's just look and explore just really quickly a larger um, pictures of these. This is a right um, rectangular prism, okay? It means it's straight up and down, they're right angles at each. An oblique means that it's leaning, kind of like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, okay? So it just kind of leans. It was upright once, and um, it is not anymore. All right, this is an oblique cylinder, all right? As you can see, its height is going to be from here to here. Okay, that's its height. It's the perpendicular distance from one point to the other on the bases. However, you notice that this is not at the center. They, the, what connects the centers of your two bases is called the axis, and uh, that really doesn't mean anything to us for volume. It's just showing us that the degree at which the oblique um, solid is leaning. All right, so we're interested in height. We're interested in this. In a right cylinder, obviously, they'll connect both the centers, and you'll see your height. And, of course, radius is always from the center of your circles. Okay, circular basis. All right, so let's get started on a problem. Okay. We want to find the volume of the rectangular prism. And rectangular prism just meaning its base, which is down here. Okay, I always look at what it's sitting on to be the base. Um, and um, its volume equals the base area, capital B again, times its height. So if we use this as its base area, this obviously makes sense to be how tall it is. Okay, that's its height. All right, now you guys have, have worked with boxes and, and, sol and cubes for a long time. This is probably fifth, sixth, seventh grade you've been, you know, seen this. So base area um, is just length times width because that's a rectangle. So we know volume of a rectangular prism or a cube to be length times width times height. And you can use that. That's fine. Just want to point out that your base area, okay, is going to be length times width, which is 8 times 5. Again, general rule versus all these little rules that can come out of this depending on the type of base that you have in your solid is a little bit easier to remember this, the general rule and look and say, what do I have? All right, but most of us know this by heart anyway. So the volume here, very easily enough, is going to be um, 40 times our height, which is 3, or it's going to be 8 times 5 times 3, and that's going to be 120 inches cubed for volume, and that's it. Okay, I'm just finish up our little notes there. All right, so that's easy enough. And I don't think that's really new for you folks. Um, what might be new is, oh my gosh, what do we do with that? It's leaning. So that's an oblique rectangular prism. All right, again, our volume is our base area times our height. Our base area is just length times width. It's a, it's a square in this case, so it's 7 times 7, so 49. Our volume then is 49 times our height of 16. And our volume is, um, what is that, 16 times 49, 784. And our units are centimeters cubed. There's our volume. Okay. All right, what if we're missing a piece? Okay, we never know. We could be missing a length, a side, a height, whichever, a width. So... Again, our base area, we know it to be length times width times height. So our base area in this case is 21 times 30. So our base area is going to be 630. And that's inches squared. And so our volume is going to be 630 times h, which we don't know. And we're going to put in our volume of 3150. 
Okay, so we have 3,150 inches cubed as our volume. We're going to set it equal to 3, uh, 630 times h, and we'll find h in a minute. When we divide by 630, h is going to be 5. So your height is 5 inches. And there's your answer. All right, so missing a side on these is not as difficult. All right, now let's get to cylinders. Well, it's an oblique cylinder. All right, now again, general rule, volume equals base times height. Much better to know the general rule and then look at your base and determine what formula you need to do or to use. So our base is a circle, so pi r squared. Our radius is 4, okay? So our base area is going to be 4 squared times pi, so 16 pi. And that's centimeters squared, right? Our volume is going to be our base area, 16 pi, times our height, and our height is denoted here. Okay, it's outside so that we can see it clearly, but it's the perpendicular distance from one base to the other. Okay, and there's your right angle. So that's going to be times 7. All right, so our volume is going to come out to be 16 times 7, which is 112 pi centimeters squared. This is an exact answer. So if you need to leave your answer in terms of pi, that's what it is. Done. Okay, but just don't forget, um, sorry, cubed, 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 cubed. Don't forget your units, okay? So make that a cubed because it is volume. And again, always go back and check that just to be sure you didn't make an error on your units, which uh, a lot of us, you know, we go quickly and we just you know, kind of forget that, all right? Now, if you need it to be approximate, if you're using 3.14, okay? So I'm going to show you two things. Using 3.14, which is what some of the online um, software like IXL uses, um, when you take that 112 times 3.14 substituted in for pi, you're going to get approximately 351.68 centimeters cubed for your volume. If you're using pi and you're just putting pi in on your calculator, the volume is going to come out a little bit different. Not much, but it's significant enough where it changes your digits. So it's still going to come out to 351, but it's going to be 0.86 and centimeters cubed. So watch what you're using, all right, and whatever your directions say to use so that you can come up with the appropriate answer that is expected on either a test, a quiz, or homework, or on IXL or any other kind of online tool. And lastly, what if we're missing um, something like our radius? So if we don't know our radius, it's r. If we know our height, okay, right here, is 10, all right? And we know our volume is 282.6 centimeters cubed. We can go our out of business the same way we were before, okay? Volume equals to our base area times our height. Our base area, in this case, because it's a circle, it's pi r squared, and we don't know r, so that is what we have for base area. All right, our height is 10, so now we're going to take our volume of 282.6. It's going to equal to our base area of pi r squared. Again, we don't know r, that's why we leave it that way, and times 10. All right, so now we're going to divide by 10 to start solving. We need to isolate r squared so that we can get r alone. That's our variable. All right, when we divide by 10, we're going to get 28.26, and that equals pi r squared. Now we're going to divide by pi. So r squared equals to 28.26 divided by pi. We're in a position now to solve for r, so we take the square root of each side, and we only want the positive, so r is exactly going to be equal to the square root of 28.26 over pi, all under the root. That's exact. And the units on this would be, in our case, centimeters cubed. 
But then if you're going to use 3.14, as a lot of online tools use, okay, so if you use 3.14 for pi, then r is going to be approximately equal to, um, r squared actually is going to be exactly equal to 9 when you divide by 3.14, and r will equal to 3 when we take the square root. All right, so that's one thing. If you're going to use pi on the calculator and not round it to anything, if you're just going to use pi, then when you solve, you're going to get r is going to be r squared is going to be approximately equal to 8.9954. Okay, and when you take the square root, r will approximately be equal to 2.9992. And then, so that's close enough to 3, so it's approximately equal to 3. All right. Now, our units on both of these, you want to go back and fix that, would be centimeters, and on this one, also centimeters. So again, depending on the software you're using or what your directions say on a test quiz or homework, if you're using 3.14, your answer comes out as if there were no decimal at all. But if you're using pi, it changes the accuracy of the number because... Uh, rounding is definitely changing the accuracy of pi. All right, and there you found your radius.